Hi there. By listening to this podcast, you'll gain practical skills in mastering English small talk, expand your range of conversation topics, and learn what subjects to avoid to ensure you have a nice conversation. Navigate social situations more confidently. Make better connections with people, whether that's in your personal or your professional life, through the art of meaningful small talk. Suitable topics. Good questions. So if you want to move your English into being sociable and making conversations, this podcast will help you do that. And while you might be eager to dive into small talk, do you know which topics you should avoid in English speaking cultures? If not, you definitely want to stay tuned until the end of the podcast. I'll be sharing what are unsuitable topics for small talk conversation, which may even amuse you. So make sure you listen right through to the end to avoid embarrassing small talk topics. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. Okay, first of all, let's define small talk. What is it? Well, small talk is the kind of conversation that people have when they first meet, when they don't really know one another. Small talk also happens between people who do know each other, but who perhaps haven't seen each other for a while. Even people who are close friends or family will probably start a conversation with small talk before getting into more in-depth subjects. Small talk has a number of purposes. It helps you get to know someone better, especially when you've just met. It builds rapport, that's R-A-P-P-O-R-T. Rapport means the feeling of a good relationship. So building rapport is important. Small talk plays a part in making a relationship with another person. Small talk is polite and aimed at making the other person more comfortable. Research tells us that small talk helps build rapport and trust, which can lead to better performance and reduce people's anxiety. Just think about if you're having a party, then as you welcome each guest into your house, this is much more successful if you make small talk with each person as they arrive, as you welcome them. And have you ever thought about how a simple small talk conversation can leave a lasting impression? making you more memorable to other people. You can make an impact and that's useful. So small talk may happen when people meet socially, just for enjoyment or to be sociable. But have you ever thought about how much small talk can impact your work relationships and your opportunities there? Again, if you want to make a positive impression, then small talk is necessary in order to get the feel of a person and for that person to get a feel for you then you may be prepared to start to build trust and do business together. Also, a purpose of small talk is to find what we call common ground, meaning places where your interests are similar, so that you can enjoy talking together about those interests. And have you ever wondered why some people love small talk and are good at it, and some people really don't like small talk? Whether you love it or hate it, it's still important to be able to do it. For those who dislike small talk because they'd rather talk about more interesting things, then small talk is just a stepping stone, a bridge, if you like, to more interesting in-depth conversation. And learning to be good at small talk is important if you suffer from what we call in English social anxiety. That's S-O-C-I-A-L and anxiety, A-N-X-I-E-T-Y. Anxiety is worry, in other words, and this social anxiety is specifically worry about social interaction, the fear of meeting and talking with new people. If you find yourself anxious about this, about talking to new people, then this is another reason why practicing small talk can really help you. And what are suitable topics for small talk? What do people in English speaking cultures consider good small talk? So there are a number of usual topics and I'll run through them and give you some examples of questions or conversations around these topics. 
This is a practical, easy to use piece of advice on small talk for English learners, giving you specific questions and phrases you can use in real life situations. Here goes with an obvious one to start with. I'll give you six different topics. Number one, the weather. You might be surprised to learn that talking about the weather isn't just a British thing. It's actually a universal piece of small talk. Whether you're in the UK, the US, Canada or Australia, starting a conversation with a comment about the weather is very common and acceptable. It's not just about the climate, it's about connecting. But this is a very British thing to talk about. And I've done podcasts before on weather conversation. If you want more of that specifically, Adept English podcast number 620 is very popular and goes into more detail on this topic. Lots of phrases and vocabulary for you to use. The weather is useful if you're only going to have a very quick conversation. Perhaps it's with the person who's on the checkout at the supermarket. Then isn't it lovely weather we're having? Or are you doing anything nice at the weekend? I think the sun's out. That may be a good way to go. Or sometimes in the UK, have you seen the rain? Or, oh my goodness, it's so cold today. Are you ready for some more valuable small talk tips? Number two, work. For a more getting to know you type of small talk, work is usually a good topic. And if you find that the person you're talking to isn't working at the moment, then showing interest in what they're doing instead is polite. They may be taking time out because they've got small children, for example. So showing interest in people's jobs is a good way of doing small talk. What's your job? How long have you been doing that? Where do you want to be in five years time in your career? Do you like your job? And if so, why? And of course, you need to have prepared what you would answer to each of these questions as well. Small talk is about back and forth. It's you talking about you and the other person talking about them. That goes, I guess, for any type of conversation, really. But you perhaps need to be prepared. What are you prepared to share about yourself? Number three, friends and family. Another good topic for small talk is a person's family. And if you know them better, perhaps also their friends. You may already know what the person's family situation is, or you may discover it in your small talk conversation. Does the person have children? Are they married? If you both have small children or even children who are going to university, that's immediately something in common, a similar experience or situation that you might spend some minutes talking about. Perhaps even does the person have pets? You may discover that you both like cats, for instance. Friends and family type conversations are also useful when you're reconnecting with someone that you've made small talk with before. You might say, ah, I remember last time you were telling me about how your wife had set up a new business. How is it going? Or, I remember your daughter is studying law at university, isn't she? How is it going? How is she doing? Number four, current stuff. By current stuff, I mean what's going on. This might include small talk conversation about what's happening in the news, things that have happened, current affairs, current issues perhaps. Or another popular small talk conversation might be, what series are you watching at the moment? Whether that's on Netflix or Apple TV, or even who do you follow on Spotify or YouTube? Perhaps the conversation could be, what films have you seen lately? Or have you read any good books lately? And this current stuff conversation readily moves into what type of series or films do you enjoy? One of my favourite conversations when I meet with my daughters, what series are you watching? So we share series which we've discovered and enjoyed. And often we watch a series on the other person's recommendation. Sometimes we may even spend time comparing notes if it's a really good or long series, something worth discussing. Number five, travel. This is a topic that most people are interested in. Travel may include questions like, do you travel with your work? Or what trips have you taken this year? Or are you intending to get away this summer? So it may be a future focused set of questions. What travel are you intending to do? What places are you intending to visit? 
Or the conversation could be about past trips. Where have you been in the world? You and the other person may discover that there are places that you've both been to and you may find yourself comparing notes. That means talking about whether your experience was similar or different. And the conversation may even move towards discussing places that people recommend travelling to or even where people perhaps recommend avoiding travelling to. Even those bad travel experiences can make entertaining small talk conversation. Last but not least, number six, food. Something which is present in everybody's life. We all need to eat. But more interesting to talk about if you are a food enthusiast, a foodie, perhaps we would call that in English, F-O-O-D-I-E, means someone who's enthusiastic about food. What type of food do you prefer? What do you like to eat? What's your favourite food? You might discuss cuisine, that's C-U-I-S-I-N-E, and that means cooking specific to a part of the world. Which cuisine is your favourite? In the UK, we like Indian food or our own version of that, I suppose. But you can also eat Italian, Chinese, Vietnamese, Lebanese, French, Thai, Japanese, perhaps in the form of sushi. Which of these we like best? That's a suitable conversation and for many people an enjoyable topic for small talk. You may even get on to recommending or discussing particular restaurants locally. And the other part of this conversation can be, what do you cook yourself? Are you a foodie? This type of conversation can also move into what you eat for your health as well. So that gives you plenty of topics to make small talk about, which will enable you to make good social connections with people in English. What are the topics which generally you want to avoid in small talk? Well, many of these will be obvious and it's probably the same in most cultures of the world. You wouldn't generally talk about what we call bodily functions. That means the nitty gritty of personal hygiene or toilet habits or say how often you have sex. Those topics will be considered impolite in most places in the world. Another thing to avoid is asking questions which are too personal, too much personal detail. That's a big no-no. And I think in English speaking cultures, the UK in particular, you would never ask someone, how much do you earn? That's something we keep to ourselves. It's deeply personal and not something that's usually openly discussed. Other topics to avoid if you're just getting to know someone, well, religion can be deeply divisive. That's D-I-V-I-S-I-V-E. And that adjective means it divides people. People have very different and strong feelings about it. And perhaps it's the same with politics as well. In the UK, we don't tend to discuss politics in small talk. That type of discussion is much more likely to happen when people know each other well, and they're already familiar with what each other's politics are then it's much less likely to give offence if they disagree. So even topics like Brexit or Covid are so divisive, people have such different opinions about them, that you might want to save those topics until you're beyond the small talk and you really know the other person much better. I hope this helps with making small talk in English. Let us know what you think. And if you'd like more information about social anxiety, for example, I'd be happy to cover that in a future podcast. Just let me know. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.